So I've been a coder for over 20 years. And when I started building AI apps with the best models, I thought that my experience would give me the ultimate unfair advantage. But I couldn't have been more wrong because what I found instead was a constant battle. My apps kept breaking and I was stuck in a frustrating cycle of debugging and trying to launch apps. I wish I had known that the problem wasn't the code, it was my entire approach. So to help you finally break that cycle, I'm going to give you my simple four step ship framework to build apps without writing code. It's the same system that I use to build apps that don't fail faster than any developer ever could. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Rob and I've been a coder for over 20 years. But now I teach people how to build apps with AI in ways that even non-technical people can understand. I do this here on YouTube and inside of my new AI coding workshop, which you can check out in the description down below. And I know where you are right now because you're using Claude code, maybe cursor, you have definitely played with tools like Lovable. And when you build something, it works for like five minutes, but then it breaks. Then you ask the AI to fix it. It says it fixed it, but you test it and it's still broken. Then the AI apologizes and it rewrites the same broken code just differently. And you're sitting there asking yourself, should I learn how to code? Here's the thing though, and this is going to sound totally wild, but you are asking the wrong question entirely. Because imagine you hire the world's best carpenter. The person can swing a hammer perfectly, they can cut wood with surgical precision. Their craftsmanship is insane. But here's the thing, you never gave them the blueprints. You just tell them, build me a house. And then what happens? Well, they'll build you something, but the bathroom might be where the kitchen should have been and the roof might not even align with the walls of the house. Not because they are bad carpenters, but because they are guessing what it is that you actually want. And this is literally what you're doing with AI right now. You get access to the world's best technology with Cloud Opus 4 or GPT-5, but you're not giving it the blueprints. You're just saying, build me an app, hoping for the best. The skill that you actually need isn't coding. It's system architecture. And I'm about to show you exactly how to master it. Because here is my simple four-step framework that I call SHIP. This changed everything for me and it will help you actually ship apps instead of debugging them forever. Plus, it's completely free and I'm giving it away. What if I told you that there was a coding agent that performs better than even Claude code? Well, there might be and it's called Warp, which just became the number one AI coding agent on Terminal Bench and it even ranks top five on SWE Bench Verified, where it competes directly with the world's best AI models. What makes Warp different is that it's a standalone app built from the ground up for agentic AI coding. This thing can literally do it all. Set up, build, review, and deploy everything in one app without ever having to context switch between an IDE, Stack Overflow, and an LLM client. It can even run multiple coding agents in parallel so you can work even faster. And listen, I still believe that full IDEs have their place, but the trend towards terminal and prompt-based coding is real and it becomes literally more popular every day. I personally use terminals for a lot of my daily work and many engineers and vibe coders choose Warp for this instead of traditional editors like Cursor and Windsurf. So download Warp today for free and try it for yourself. The link is in the description down below and thank you Warp for sponsoring this part of the video. So let's go through all the letters starting with S. What does the S in ship actually stand for? Well, I used to just open an AI editor and say, build me a login page, but it always created a mess of a project and it would get totally lost in the code that it created. But then I learned to take 10 minutes to write the apps high level components down first and plan them out. So then suddenly AI was able to create really clean projects. So the S in SHIP stands for systems planning. Before you even touch an AI coder, you need to think about the individual components in your app and what you require. For example, where will this data live? Do I need user logins? Figure out all of these components of your system first and then move to the next step. And that is the letter H in SHIP. And to explain this to you, let me tell you a little story because right now I spend a lot of money every single month because I let AI convince me of a database service that isn't actually that cheap. And if I had spent just five minutes asking another AI on what my options are, 
maybe I wouldn't get bled dry every single month right now. So the H in ship stands for hand pick your tools. This is where you explore what the best options actually are for your system components. I use Grok for this because it's incredibly fast and great for research, but the key is that you pick the tools, not the AI. Instead of randomly choosing Superbase, Firebase or Convex, you look at the options and you decide. How much does it cost? What can I get for free? Does it have all the features that I actually need? Then once you're done, you can ask Grok or ChatGPT to create a written plan that you can copy, which is very important for the next step. And if you want to make this easier, add this magic phrase to the end of each of these technical questions. Answer without technical jargon. I'm not an engineer. Help me understand so I can make decisions. Game changer. Moving on to the letter I. What does the I in ship actually stand for? And Man, I used to spend weeks building the perfect app with 20 features only to discover that the core idea wouldn't work. Like the time that I built a whole iPhone app for like three months with a client only to discover that what we were building, well, let's just say Apple would have never approved the app to the App Store. But now I built the ugliest possible version in just a couple of hours, just to prove that the concept actually works. This alone has saved me hundreds of hours. So the I in ship stands for initial test build. This is the step that no one teaches you. Take that written plan from step H and build the absolute minimum to prove that your system works. No pretty designs, no extra features. And if you're building an AI chatbot, for example, skip the login system, skip password resets, just prove that the AI can connect to your data first and do not make it fancy. And then moving on into the final step, and that is the letter P. What does the P stand for? This one is going to hurt to learn because I used to try to fix my messy minimal test versions, spending literally days untangling code that I didn't even understand because I didn't write it. Every fix that I thought I did created two new bugs. And then I discovered something that the best AI builders do. They throw away the test and rebuild from scratch. So the P in ship stands for production build. Most people never get here because they try to salvage their messy tests. Don't. Trust me, please don't. And now that you know exactly what works from your test project, just start fresh. With all that knowledge, refine your plan and build the real app. Because this puts you in the top 1%. Because while everyone else says, build me an app, you are giving the AI a battle-tested blueprint. And if you don't do this right now, in 6 or 12 months from now, this opportunity will be gone because the models will have become so good that everyone will do it. So now let me show you how I actually use this in practice. I've prepared a little bit so you can follow exactly and see precisely what I mean. So in this example, we are going to use the ship framework to plan a custom AI chat bot platform. It's the type of tool that people currently pay $20 to $50 a month for, and we're going to figure out how to build it in literally just a few minutes. I have actually already prepared this a little bit. So what you can see here is that, again, I used Grok, and I prepared a little prompt for you that you can actually use to figure this out. A little caveat on this is that I teach my students how to use Next.js and Vercel. Vercel is where you actually launch your applications and Next.js is the core of every app that I built and I think everyone should use it. And so the prompt that I have here is made with that in mind, but of course adjusted for whatever you would like to build. And then you have to, of course, fill in your idea. So for example, I say, custom chatbots similar to OpenAI's custom GPTs. And then when you see what I did here, and again, make sure that you use this prompt and always say something like this, right? Answer without technical jargon, keep things simple and concise. I'm not an engineer. This will go such a long way when you're not a technical person. And when we scroll down, you can actually see the examples. And it's actually a great example of why you shouldn't let AI make your decisions. Because if you look closely here, for the user login authentication, it recommended that we use Clerk, but it also says we can use database, uh, Superbase for it. Okay, cool. Then we go to data storage, the database, and it says, okay, we should use Vercel Postgres, but it also says we could use Superbase. So now 
so we could have already just used one service for both of these, right? So weird. Then we go to file storage and it says we should use Vercel Blob. Alternatively, Superbase. You see a pattern here, right? Where it actually says we should use something else, but instead we could also use this like one tool that does it all. So that's why you need to use the second step in this framework to hand pick your tools, right? So first, we really have to like understand what is actually required. And this prompt actually does kind of both at the same time. So we say, okay, we need a user login, we need some data storage, we need some file storage, we need an AI chatbot brain, so a large language model integration, which Grok obviously recommends itself, which is kind of hilarious, right? And then we also need payment and subscriptions, where I recommend Stripe or Lemon Squeezy. Awesome, right? But here, for example, if you want to build a minimum viable project, why would you use Clerk, Vercel Postgres, Vercel Blob, and whatever, when you can just use Superbase, one service for all of them? So now that we know which components we need, which is a user login, data storage, file storage, an AI chatbot brain, payments and subscriptions, now we can dig deeper and say something like this. Okay, great. I would like to understand why you chose multiple services over Superbase and if there are any downsides of using Superbase for the app that we're trying to build here. Personally, because there's actually the LLM integration, we definitely would use Superbase for this. And I'm hoping that a prompt like this Okay, so it says, I suggested a mix of services instead of Superbase for everything for flexibility, cost, and ease of use, but avoiding... Okay, so here it actually... May, this is the exact reason why you need to handpick your tools, right? Here it argues that it avoids single service lock-in, right? So here you need to make a decision for yourself. Would you like to use something like Clerk and Vercel and the others to be not locked in to a single provider or would you prefer to have a much simpler solution, but you're relying on a single provider? That is not a decision that AI can make. You need to handpick that. So then it actually continues to say some downsides of using Superbase for everything and some decision guidance. Go Superbase if you want one dashboard for like user logins, database, storage, and to simplify learning, which is exactly what we're all about. But that is not the decision that the AI would have taken. So from here, once you have made some decisions, you can then create a plan. Let me show you what this looks like. Okay, go with the Superbase option, choose the simplest options possible, and create a plan that I can copy to an AI coding tool to actually start implementing it. Don't write code yourself, but instead focus on creating a detailed plan with multiple phases that I can copy and reuse. I just made that up on the spot, but this is what I would usually do, right? I would just ask it to create a plan with multiple stages so that we can actually do it. And you see, it's actually writing this entire implementation plan for the custom chatbot app now. Obviously, we didn't go through all the phases of figuring out if we should use this and that, right? But you understand the framework from here. And then from here, you could literally just copy the entire content or even download it and take it into a AI coder of your choice, like Cursor, Claude Code, Codex, you name it. So building with AI like this is a fundamental mindset shift. You're not becoming technical in the traditional sense. You're not learning how to code, but you're becoming an architect, a planner, and a decision maker. Think of the AI more like your construction crew, the skilled labor that you no longer have to pay for. You are actually becoming more technical than most people out there today. You're just not becoming a coder in the traditional sense. There's a huge difference between people that just type out code, wasting time all day, and a software architect that uses AI. And think about it. Would you call a building architect non-technical just because they don't put the bricks in place for the foundation? They just have a different job. They understand the system, the structure, how everything connects. And that is a very technical job, but it's also extremely valuable. And that's exactly what you have to do. Learning to code is definitely dying, but architecture and systems thinking, that's your next $100,000 skill right there. And even though a lot of people, especially engineers, will disagree, I will die on this hill. And you can apply the SHIP framework that I just taught you 
today, right now. Just go to ChatGPT or Grok and use it for your own idea. I teach this stuff for free in videos like this so you can get an unfair advantage before everyone else does. But if you want to dive deeper, check out my AI coding workshop, which shows you how to build and launch a real app with exactly these principles I just taught you. The link is in the description down below.